Hello and welcome back to the Fantasy Take TV podcast. Round one has come and gone. The season has started. Uh, teams are locked in and we're here to discuss everything that happened after the first full round of games. We got, you know, finally nine games on a weekend. Was able to relax and watch a few on the Sunday, which was nice um, as opposed to for the first week. But there's a lot of information and stuff to talk about that we got this week. So we're going to have to uh, dissect that as best we can. Um, yeah, we're going to go over obviously how each of us went, um, our MVPs and fault of the week. We'll, uh, continue that this season. Um, our early thoughts on sort of strategy, what we can see, um, you know, so far, obviously there's some players rising and falling this week already. So, um, you know, what uh, do we think is the best way to attack that? And then we're going to go over some premiums, value picks, rookies, and just ask some questions, um, you know, after one or two games that they've played where we, where we sit with them. So, um, JD, how are you, mate? Um, and how'd you go this week? I am doing pretty well, thank you. Yeah, definitely got the full um, super coach experience in the first round. You know, thinking season was over, optimism. <laughs> then mainly thinking season was over. Um, the panic trades mid round. Just you know, we're really back into the swing of things. It doesn't take long. Uh, I finished with a twenty one one six, which puts me at. 48,516 <laughs> overall for the week and for the year. So, uh, look, still close enough to, to the front as long as we've nailed some of the picks. Uh, but, yeah, it feels like starting from a long way back this year. And a lot of us are, even though I think the teams are in an all right spot. Uh, George, why don't you tell us how you did from from the whip, stunting on us. And you where know? you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm in my car at the moment. Channeling uh, old shorty super coach, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, how'd I go this week? Twenty one seventy nine, I think. And yeah, happy with the week. I think uh, high owned guys like McCurch uh, and Fife. I don't have. Um, I should just maybe just start plays that are in like eighty percent of serious teams next time, but. I uh, don't have them, but otherwise went all right. Like Green was all right, Matty Crouch and Steele. I hope they can keep up with these young guns. I don't know how they're going to, but if they can get within 10, 15 of them every week, I'll be happy. But uh, overall, yeah, pretty happy. I think rank 16K. And I feel like the last two years have been pretty dejected around one because I feel like I've cooked it. But I think this year we're in an okay position to move up. So probably the like 16k doesn't sound great, but it's round one, so who cares? But I think the team's not too bad. Um, how'd you go, Anna? Yeah, the worst of the lot. I don't. I, I'm trying to think if I've seen a rank this low since you know about seven years ago or something when I just didn't take it as seriously as I do now. Little kid just putting in players that he, he knows the name of, and I mean I wasn't that young back then, but I didn't take it serious like until about probably five or six years ago. 73K. I don't, <laughs> I haven't looked back, but I, I should find out when that, the last time I've been that low. And of course it's round one, whatever. Um, 2059. So, we'll, we'll, you know, we've all, obviously all got our own videos out of what our teams look like. But yeah, as JD said, a few mid round swings, some, you know, you're looking good at one stage, then, you know, as the, the round goes on, you look bad. But um, I don't think you guys did MVP in fault. So I'll kick it off and we'll go back around again. Um, yeah. MVP. Uh, by the way, like I think there's only yeah. about fifty or sixty points between you and me, and that's oh, twenty five thousand yeah. <laughs> spots. And I think George is only about another sixty spots again, and he's Crazy. what nearly yeah. top ten k. So it's like thirty thousand spots. There's a lot of people still grouped up, um, of course. And you, you know, like uh, it's a difference in vice captain, captain. Those that had like a Sarong or a Green versus like you know Dacus was pretty good versus like a Bond. Uh, and then rookie roulette. I, I lost well over hundred points tonight this week. I'm sure others did as well. So. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, those things can turn around pretty quickly. But as long as the structure of your team's in a good spot, can still come good. So, sorry to cut you off, but MVP and fold of the week. Um, I'm going to go left field MVP. You know, a lot of guys that went well, a lot of people have. So, Ollie Dempsey, and it's a weird MVP. He wasn't even on my field. He didn't earn me any points, but it just means I don't have to get him in. Um, you know, I could have said a bond, a green, or not even a bond, a green or a Dacos or... I'll let George have his one later on. But, uh, yeah, I'll go with Dempsey for now. Just looks like a really good rookie. Loved his game. Um, you know, didn't hype him up in preseason, but towards the end there was really keen on picking him, and that's paid off. Bolt, 
We've got a little couple of choices here, but I'm probably going to go with Zach Fisher and steal it off you guys because I just think the fault just suits him, don't you? <laughs> um, He's very faulty. <laughs> what about you? Uh, so I'm I'm going to go um, MVP of the week. Uh, I'll go Dacos. Like I called for him to be you know, a worthwhile starting selection and then, you know, potentially even threaten M1 this year, which might be hard just given how many other mids blew up these first couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I'll give him the MVP of the week just because that was one of my big preseason calls early on when it wasn't popular and that's played out. And then my fold of the week, I'm going to give to Nick Martin. Um, mainly, like the score is one thing, but that's my boy, you know, ride or die. And to see him just throw up in my face round one, that hurts. Uh, I would have liked to have at least, you know, pretended that he could be a premium for a couple of weeks before falling off. We've just really started with butchering the ball and getting a terrible four quarter experience. So uh, I still have some optimism he'll come good, but that is a terrible start to the year. A 63 off someone that we we're hoping could be potentially a defender keeper. George MVP and fault of the week for you. Um, I'm going to start with fault. I'm giving fault to myself for not picking the Kircher. I'm an idiot <laughs> for that. Um, like, Bailey Scott took, like, the most kick-ins and stuff. So I was just thinking there's so much sharing back there. And I thought, well, Kurt's probably, probably do 75, 80. And maybe Barry can match that. And because I'm a crazy enough, I'll pick Barry instead. Um, and that was, like, if you thought Dacos, like, people accused Dacos of getting cheap touches in his first year. That was 10 <laughs> times worse. <laughs> that was horrible to watch. Um, so I need to get him in somehow. Um but actual players, I think Bishop, annoying, I hated that pick and felt forced to pick it, and here we are. But it's part of the game, like, executing on, you know, picking the players that you really wanted and stuff, and it doesn't really matter because now I'm stuck with him because I felt forced to pick him. But, yeah, wish I didn't. Everyone sort of has those with certain players, so it is what it is. And then uh, my MVP, I'm going to give to Matt Crouch just because I committed to him as a pick six months ago, and I guess pretty lucky as well. Led's CBA has dropped to 50%, and that's, yeah, I didn't see that coming. So that helps Matt Crouch a lot, I imagine, and probably helps Dawson if those are worried about Dawson. So um, I'll give it to Matt Crouch. So, yeah. All right. I thought for sure, Zach, but no, nah, Matt. I think we all have him, so it's like it doesn't matter too much. But Not everyone, mate. Maybe all of us, but... Not everyone. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. So we've just, um, before the show, written down some questions across premium. So obviously all the, all the high price players in each line, some value picks, and then some rookies. And we're going to ask a few questions along, um, you know, specific to those um, areas and, and price points that, you know, whether or not we think we're confident or not, and, and we'll just go through. Um, you know, it's going to be, we could be here for three hours if we tried to talk through every single player. Um, so we'll try and keep it more, re- you know, relevant to what do we like and probably more so what are we concerned about? Um, so with premiums, um, we'll start with the defense. I'm just gone down to about eight or nine, I think in defense and the highest owned ones, obviously there's some others that I won't have mentioned, but Dacos, of course, Stewart, Hayden Young, Harry Sheasel, Sicily, Houston, Whitfield, Shaw and Ryan. So they're the top, I think nine owned. First question to you, JD, is any of these, like, are you worried about any of these that should be even instantly trade out or at least a high consideration after either round zero or their second game in round one? Uh, I mean, I think Sicily can go. Uh, Sicily's probably the obvious one from that list, just given that he dropped the 40. He's probably going to have to play more accountable at times throughout the year and he got suspended. So I think that's one that you can safely move on from. Um, Apart from that, there are others I definitely have concerns about. Uh, So... Houston now has Burton and Farrell back there. I think uh, Stewart has Holmes back there. So whether this takes some of the top end off some of these premiums, I think that's a bit of a worry. And even what happened with Short being moved up the ground more than what we'd seen in the past, I think there's a bit of concern there. But nothing um, scary enough for me to move off any of those this week apart from Sicily. Yep. I mean, we all probably agree Sicily's an instant trade out. Um you still got a fight a week suspension. George, any others that you're just slightly concerned about of that list there? Um, Hayden Young, not going to trade him. Uh, 
CBAs were not where we wanted them to be. I guess it's the product of Fife back in the midfield. So I think it, there were like 50-something. It was it was and, also a product of the injuries to that Freo side because in the yeah. fourth quarter, they had to move Hayden Young back into defense, um, which, yeah, definitely affected him a bit. Yeah, so I see him as like a... Like, I'll probably just trade around him. Like, not... I know, you, like, playing is off the charts, obviously, and he'll bounce back. But um, if he's not getting a higher CBA role, then... Probably not going to be top six, so I'm just going to plan for him to be D7 M9 at this point and just trade around him. Uh, but yeah, I don't like this role changing, but yeah, it can happen with injuries in the team. Uh, other than that, yeah, obviously Sicily's just lost his, like lost the plot at the moment uh, on top of the concerns that were leading into round one with the defence changing a lot. I think you, you just get Sheezel in, I think, if you don't have him. And then if you have Stuart, you're, you're chilling, it's fine. Uh, Dacos, you're chilling, it's fine. And then everyone else, I'm not too sure. And obviously, like Houston and Ryan, you'd be happy with. Houston's got the nice run. Luke Ryan took like 80% kick-ins again. So you're going to have to actually own him. This I've never owned him before, so I'm actually going to have to get him in at some point. And it can't be early now, so he's going to get away from us. But um, other than that, like not really. Um, that's actually the next question is which you know player from that list do you think Rose you know, mo- like highest in likelihood to maybe not amongst the top in the, their line, but now after their round one performance or a couple of weeks performance, you think they could be closer uh, to the top. I think Ryan might fit that bill, but there's a caveat because he might have to cover off the second key tall now. So I think if that wasn't the case, and maybe we'll wait and see their team sheet, um, he'd probably be number one because, I mean, look. We watch him yep. do it every year and we continue to just go stuff this guy, but it's like so yeah. Um anyone else, JD, that you think has risen exponentially? Yeah, stocks up Brian. I also think stocks up Whitfield, uh, which is gonna trigger a lot of people with Whitfield P PTSD. But uh the role that we've seen in the last two weeks is prime Whitfield. He's moving amazingly. They're looking for him through transition and He's using the ball well. I think the big knock on his game, which I've noticed owning him in the past, is he will try and kick off more precise chiseled kicks. And that means when they come off, don't come off, they can be like uh, clangers. And the super coach also doesn't score them as well. So like Whitfield hitting a, like a bullet 25 meter pass doesn't score as well as Luke Ryan hoofing it 40 meters to a two on one, which is ridiculous, but that's the scoring system. And I have noticed that that can affect Whitfield and scoring, but overall, like I think his role and the way GWS are playing means he's stocks up as well as Ryan for me over the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Anyone else stocks up, George? <clears throat> Not really. I think Powell looks pretty good, mm. but I don't trust him enough yet. And he's injury prone, so I'm not going to jump on that one. But it looks good. Yeah, I think he was 10th on this list. So he deserves to probably be mentioned amongst those. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's Ryan, depending what they do with their team. Um, it probably shouldn't be as stocks up as we think he is because he probably was always going to do it. But <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's probably clearly the one of that I list. Mean, and then there was, yeah. there was definitely talk in the preseason that he was there battling was some stuff, injury. Yeah. But like you, you can't see it at the moment if he was. So I think that's probably one of the biggest things that is stocks up. Yep. It was so hard um, to watch him. Like I think it was a I pointed out in Discord, like he was like running backwards to get a chip chip kick. And I'm like, this is is this for real? Yeah. Yep. He's always done it. He and sprints further away from goal than he does towards. Complete uh, monopoly on kick ins on the weekend as well, uh, with Hayden Young out of the side. So he had eight of ten. Yeah. yeah. Played on from seven. So, yeah, pretty good numbers there. I think um, um, taking eight, he only did, had one game last year where he had, or two games last year where he took more than eight begins. So, right up there with the best, the best numbers for him. Yep. And then I guess anyone you are most worried about to fall out of sort of the top of their line, and we probably have answered this with Sicily. Maybe he's a trade out, we all think, anyway. He has maybe the most risk to fall out. Anyone else, um, JD, that you think has risk? From preseason to now, Sicily's definitely the one that's fallen the most. I thought, you know, even with the changes, he might still be thereabouts, but uh, it's pretty worrying after the first week. And then, yeah, I'm not as hot on Stuart and Houston as others are, 
they could very much turn it around, but they both had pretty soft matchups over, over the weekend. And they got there in the end for super coach not. But if you look at like their fantasy scores, there wasn't actually a lot of volume in there. So uh, that worries me a little bit um, on both of them, just with some of those other options, taking away some of their opportunity. It may pan out that it's just taking them easier, first games back, all that type of stuff. But yeah, those are the ones that are probably like, not like locking in that they're falling out, but a little bit of concern that that, that with yeah. some of these other guys popping up, they're the ones that drop down the pecking order. Uh, yeah. I don't mind Houston. I'm just waiting for the floor games because they'll come. He had like quite a few intercepts just like land in his lap basically. But like, he's fine pick with the Adelaide over on, but happy to wait on him. And Stewart too, like with Holmes back there. Well, sometimes he's back there, but yeah, I was happy to wait on those. I'll probably get those two and Luke Ryan. They're probably the three that I like the most. Yeah. And I you think see if Whitford, Stewart drops. Yeah, I think Whitford's probably more DT pick. Uh, but certainly looks good and could be viable in a C. Yeah. I think with Stewart, I mean, often this is like his floor, right? He can have these 70 DT games, JD, and because he gets a couple of intercepts, it's like he's at least going 90 to 100. Like, yeah. So maybe there's scope to improve, but yeah, it's only one sample size. We'll, we'll have to see some more. All right, that's defense. Let's get on to the midfield. And there's obviously a n- number of names here. It's like, Should we talk about uh, rookie structure in defense first or say that for later? We'll save it for later. We'll get down to the rookies. Okay. Um, Later, and we'll talk about our trades and, and maybe some more strategy stuff. Let's just um, – just any premium concerns and then we'll get to value. Finish with the rookies. Like mids, there's a lot owned. And I think like you said it, George, it's like the new wave coming through all starting to hit their prime plus the older ones that are probably just about to exit it. But can they produce for us for like another one or two years? And it, it's great, created quite a grouping. I think um, you know there's some on this list I don't even even have that some people would would um would be entertained by. So, um, Bont, Green, Took, Errol, Butters, Track, Dawson, Steele, Rosie, Sarong, Merritt, and LDU and Libba, and I've, yeah, even left a few off there. Um, looks like we've lost George. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he was using his car to charge his phone. Uh, and it looks like battery was not going up. Uh, battery was going down. So we'll see how, we'll see how long you... he has to charge before he returns. That's all right. <laughs> we'll we'll soldier on. Um, so any of these, JD, that I listed, you've got at least got the sheet up there because um, George yep, can't yep, see it on his no, phone. But yeah, any good. like instantly concerned about and would consider trading out uh, after this uh, week? Instantly concerned about... So I don't think there's anyone that's must trade out. Um, I would say some of the concerns I had for some of them in the preseason still seem to be there for me. Uh, so Dawson with Crouch coming in, uh, I think Errol with the lack of inside mids and and how that affects him, I've still got concern over that. Uh, Libba, I definitely still have concerns over as well, but no, nothing was like glaringly obvious enough that I would be trading any of these out this week. Are you in the same camp or do you think you'd be jumping off any of those? Oh, it's it's probably only Dawson. And look, it's he gets excuses, much like Young, he's... um. That game was uh, not as wet as Young's, but 11 clangers. They're like the type of players that um, if their kicks aren't hitting, they can really suffer a poor score. So this is my question mark with Dawson because he's at such a high price because obviously last year's average was awesome. But starting him at 650, he drops an 80 this week. Look, I wouldn't instantly jump off, but it's kind of that thing, J.D., where there's some players rising this week and then next week you, you might need your trades for something else if, Dawson drops another 80. Can you really hold on to that in such a game? Nope, that you'll be trading him. But so I, I think, do you want to get that done now? Yeah. That's the only thing. No, we'll get to trades later. But I think like the way I think about it is like you want to be jumping on and off the guys that you're much more sure about yep. will not work out. Whereas someone like Dawson could easily oh. reverse that with a 140 this week and then you'd feel Correct. silly trading him. <laughs> I think they're back at home. So you'd yeah, back him in. It's just you'd, it's like do you want to be stuck next week having to look at him? Um. Outside George, of is that. your light, lighter charger working again? You're back with us? Um, phone just overheats, so I don't know. So there we go. <laughs> oh, get the air con going. Get the AC on. It is, it is on. That. It's, uh, it's on 19 <laughs> degrees at the moment, so I'm going to freeze my ass off soon. Are you hypothermia for finishing the podcast. That is dedication. We we appreciate that, George. Uh, so just quickly, yeah. any um, premium mids that you saw really worrying signs about um, out of the weekend or would even consider trading? 
Not really. I think you can play break-even game with like a Liver or a Dawson if they drop a poor one again. Um, Liber is regression risk because of age, so I've always hated that pick, but seems to be popular. I've seen a few in Discord too. Um, he still had the ninety percent CBAs as well, so CBA numbers were good on both him and Dawson. Yeah, Dawson. I mean, you got percent You got to back him in. So, I think all the premiums look, look fine, though. Like, I wouldn't be too worried about anyone. It's just Dawson Libba with their break evens. If they put another poor one, you just get them back later because. Uh, obviously, like cash ins off the charts this year. Even like, you know, a lot of the newer new age mids are going to skyrocket in price, and there's just rookies everywhere to the point where you can't even get them all. So, the more cash in in the game, the harder these guys are going to fall. So that's mm -hmm. probably why I would cash some of them in. And we're all looking for, I don't know, to cash like get a Zachary or give us up to Massimo, and I don't know, get Jack Billings and stuff like this. So. Cash has to come from somewhere, and maybe it's like from one of these guys. But you don't want to go backwards in premiums at the same time. But if you can sort that out somehow, then I think yeah, that I would do that. But no, no real issue. Like no premiums. I thought would you have a cooked or anything? But yep. I think you yeah, you hold this week. Yep. Um, let's try and speed this up a little bit, JD, and I'll ask because we got a lot to get through. The riser and faller in one question. So give me your biggest riser and then your biggest faller after uh, one game or two. Biggest rise from the mids would have to be Sarong, just given the score that he put out in the weekend. Some concern over what his role would look like with the four, well, with hey, Young and, and Fife coming in, but looked mm -hmm. phenomenal. Um, really did. And I think it's hard not to when you're getting 45 plus touches in a game. <laughs> Whether or not he continues that, I'm, I'm interested to see, but uh, probably going to be the most popular trading target this week from the premium mids, I would imagine. Uh, so yeah, he'd be the biggest riser. Biggest fall is probably Dawson or Libba for me, but I, I, yeah, as, as discussed. Yep. Any disagreements, George? Or can we can move swiftly on. Um, yeah, probably agree mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. I think it's like the young guys that are like Ralph, yeah. Sarong, and um, yeah, see, Green. Like, Ralph, yeah. The CBAs are so high, the contested rate's super high, so you feel safe with them. So, yeah, yeah, you do worry if you're going like a an aging guy, like can they keep up with these young guys? I don't know. I feel nervous about that. But, yeah, agree with JD. Yeah, does anyone have a quick opinion on Rio? Because people will probably ask. And well done I if mean, you start him, of course, one fifty, one sixty. You can't be upset. But any of the Gold Coast boys really. This this stuff yeah, he's doing. <laughs> Miller's cheap as well, and he's obviously put up two really good scores. It's pretty crazy. You can't really bring him running. in this week. That's I the agree. thing. That is the thing. So, If you didn't have Green, uh, would you get him this week? No. No. No, I still wouldn't. Like You sort of commit to those picks with the buy-in round three. That the, you're not they're, they're projected to go up like... 30k this week if they put up I don't know like hundreds or something like out of 120s that only projected up 30k paying 30k to not have the buy I think is worthwhile so I like yeah for these guys I just don't think you can justify bringing them this week knowing they're on buy next week and the opportunity cost for that is just 30k yeah do we think he can go 115 this year what 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 would you peg him at green Green or Matty Rao. In. Oh, Matty Rao, Matty Rao. Rao. Green, we probably all think is 120, but Matty Rao. It's tough. He's still only 22. He's had obviously a couple of injuries and, you know, we know the discussion around his outside game. So it hurts like overall fantasy and obviously super coach, but he's been doing ridiculous things and like Rick one was ridiculous and it was a 137. Obviously he got a big, bigger score this week again, but I'd probably say he'd be around 115. It's tough. Uh, so what, what did he do last year? Have you got the numbers in front He's of He's only you? ever done like full year average, like 105, but it's obviously because it's probably includes some injury scores. Um, uh, it was 102.3 last year. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's somewhere between 115 or 120 in that. Um, he will improve on last year. I don't have a doubt um, for that. But these first two games, is just very hard to get a read on him. 
the first game, uh, Tigers did not win a clearance all. He he won twenty of them. He probably had more than the entire Tigers team by himself, like ridiculous numbers. And they clearly did nothing to stop him. Then the week just gone, it was a sloppy tackle fest in the wet, which suits his game to a T. Yeah. So yeah. the thing that's always been his downfall is being able to spread and work in uncondested transition style game. I'm not sure we've seen enough through the first two weeks to be sure that he has overcome those challenges to the point where he can routinely be a 110 to 115 player. He might, but I just I just don't know based on the style of those first two games. Yeah, I think he had yeah, one that's... mark in each game. I'd probably say it's agree with Betty, 115 to 120 range. But once again, yeah. it's... That might it's lower him tough. again, really. But it's it's hard because in the wet, of course, he's not getting marked. So, like, you know, it's it's one of those things where he may have worked on the con- uncontested stuff. I just don't know. I couldn't tell you. Yep. Fair enough. Um, all right. The Rucks, uh, Grundy, Gorn, English, Marshall, and Cherry. I don't think there's anyone else we could talk about. Maybe, I think you said someone has Soldo, Jaws, but I can't see how you would go there, even though he played really well. Um. Any of those you're concerned about, George? And and would you be thinking about tr- <clears throat> trading them out this week? Well, Grundy's getting nuked before he's by regardless. It's just when the, the break-even crashes or not. Um, and I think I'd probably go to Cherry. There's more points per dollar than the other guys. Yep. So I don't think I'll do it. I don't think I can even do it next week. got too much other stuff going on. No McCurchin, no Dempsey, and all that. But I'll look at it in probably two or three weeks. I think Grundy's back at the CG this week. So I think that will suit him. So, yeah, he will go by his by. I, we, I've got Heaney and Dacos, so I can't carry that many players. So, yeah, just yep. not a super competitive game from him. But everyone else looks fine. It's just like, which two do you want out of Gorn, English, and... Um, Rowan in Endgame, not sure. Yeah, probably Gorn, and then one of the one of the other two. I think we'll just let yeah. it play out. I mean, yeah, biggest stocks up for the Rucks for the week has got to be Gorn, just because the reason why we're interested in him as big is not just that he's value, but he could be a potential keeper. And he showed this week that he still has keeper upside in him, which people were doubting after week one. Um, and then yeah, the flop would have to be Grundy. Um, Thought he would do better in the Darcy Cameron matchup than what he did. Second revenge game, going back to back on those. Um, but yeah, that was disappointing. Essendon is a tricky matchup. So um, we get a price rise out of him. We get another week look at Cherry, and then we can decide if we want to downgrade Grundy to Cherry. And if he doesn't perform particularly well, I could definitely see myself doing that, especially if Cherry turns up again. Um, but yeah, so yeah, stocks, stocks down, Grundy, stocks up, gone, which is the complete reverse of last week so um a bit hard to judge these rucks off one game sample sizes and grundy's average for the year is still 105 great <laughs> average so if if we got a 105 this week no one's thinking about trading him. We'll just, just i think he got happens. half of those points in a half so 100 points in the second half last week and the rest he's been pretty average um yeah well, let's ask this question from my point of view because it's my team and rowan and grundy owner Looking, seeing that you guys are maybe you know looking to get off Grundy pretty soon anyway. If he does, obviously you know not have a great score again, um, and you'd probably go down to Cherry. Is it you know possible or, or or an option that you would consider for someone like me to go Grundy just up to Gorn and run Rowan and Gorn, which for me I think would be the ideal um, mm-hmm. two for now. I mean, obviously we've seen English play one game. He had a bit of a knock and he still pushed out at 120 so we know what that guy can do but he's obviously very expensive and not someone you'd probably want to look at till post bot you know post the early buyers at the very least and probably long uh, a bit further so is that something you would consider George and then I'll go to you JD after I would get that done ASAP <laughs> so I would not um Grundy's got a break even of 57 this week Gorn's got a break even of 89 so I think even if Grundy underperforms he probably goes up as much cash as Gorn um, so this is definitely a trade I, I'd be waiting at least a week on to get another sample size. But if Grundy's looking poor, then yeah, my blessing to prioritize getting Grundy to go on next week if Gorn still looks like he'll be a keeper. Yep. 
And I think Gorn has the Hawks, which he hasn't turned up last two times against. Not that I love that stuff, but with Rux, I think it's relevant. Uh, I'm also not Hawks sure if either of those games yeah. or with Grundy, so I don't know for sure. Uh, probably do your research there, but it is tempting, George. But I get your point. <laughs> you didn't make much of a point. You just said do it, but <clears throat> it is. Yeah, yeah once the 139 falls out, Gorn's still going to have that 160 and 72 drop out. So probably next week's the week to do it. <laughs> And Grundy's last three against Essendon, 128, 129, 153. Just what, but, probably look at Goldie, hey, You're back in the day. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's... it's. Uh, Do you yeah, think Draper Goldie, could come in? Goldie now that he's facing, not... Uh, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. That might... If you, if you do double ruck against him, that might honestly make my decision. But we'll see. All right, moving on. Forwards, premium forwards. I've just got the three big guys here. Um in the forward line, at least one of them's a big guy. No, nah, they're all they're all pretty good options. Obviously, we think Jackson's just a rental. It's pretty obvious. Um, how long that lasts is yet to be known or seen, especially with a few injuries this week. That could his role could change pretty pretty quickly. Um, most seem to think he'll stay in the ruck. That's you know they did really well in the clearances. Always not his um, his own doing. His mids, you know, Sarong was really good at sharking taps, but he competed well. I think he still went 30 hitouts to Omax 40, which, you know, some actual tall big ruckman struggled to do that against Omax. So um, we'll see what happens there. Obviously, Sammy Flanders had the early has the early buy coming up, but I think most of us would have probably still pegged him at F1 heading into before this week. And then Isaac Heaney. So did anyone rise? Did anyone fall? I think it's like kind of clear. Oh, stocks, think... stocks up all of them. Stocks yeah, up all of them. Yeah, that they all stocks played down well. really no one. Yeah, I mean, the only stock down would be that the injuries to the Freya's forward line, do they actually bring in Reedy uh, into the ruck and move Jackson forward? There's probably a lowish likelihood of that, just, but yeah, possible. Um, yeah, the I think the biggest question here will be like, if you don't have these three, and most people only have one or two, uh, should you be bringing in any of them this week? And I, I think you kind of mentioned like Flanders by next week. It's the same as the other Gold Coast and GWS guys. I'd recommend probably avoiding that. Uh, but um, Jackson is a rental. So I think if you didn't start him and we still have the same Shrek timeline, I wouldn't be jumping on him now. And that really just leaves Heaney uh, and maybe best time to pass over to George. Should people be bringing in Heaney if they do not currently have him? Depends if you want to enjoy the game or not. <laughs> Uh, well, they're playing Essendon this Saturday, uh, so I have a feeling I'm not going to enjoy it, regardless of how well Heaney does. I beg to differ, JD. Yeah. I would, I would like to, Heaney to destroy us in two weeks' time, but I guess we can go for draft picks now. You actually have to get some wins on the board. Well, we are just one year into our eight-year plan, so we can <laughs> get some more draft picks too. Uh, I kind of I agree with been, George. Like, like the picks just coming up, it's ridiculous, George. You can't fade that too much. I wouldn't entice it. Well, with Heaney, I've said this a million times, if he's moving well and injury-free, he's going to score well. And he gets sore throughout the year. It happens every year. And sometimes he needs the buy to shake that off. It's happened multiple times. So I think right now, while he's moving really well with a... What's his break-even? It's probably negative or low. 12. Yeah, negative 12. And with like West, like the dream fixture as well. I think you just get him. And if you really don't like him long-term, then... Just he should make a hundred k. You can flick him if you want on his buy, but I mean, with the forward pull, I think I'm quite happy to keep him. But yeah, I would get him yeah. this week, now or never. Yeah, pretty much. He's going to get to at least five fifty k or something like that, even with just some nineties the next three weeks. So, um, yeah, I, I actually can see him being a keeper for the rest of the year from here. So that's enough for me if I didn't have him to. Right. to tell you to go there because he's done 90, 95 in the past. Uh, you haven't, we've only seen one round, but does it look like any relevant mids are coming, becoming forwards or defenders? That, not that I saw or noticed in any CBAs or mid, you know, forward time from guys. So uh, it might be pretty easy for him to be 90, you know, anywhere in the nineties and be a keeper for the year, even if he goes back a bit more forward uh, post, post his early buy. So, Anything to add there anymore? We'll move on to some value picks. Nope. All right. Um, you guys all there still? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Keep going, keep going. We've got naps. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I just jinxed it. Jinxed it. <laughs> it. That overheat. 
too hot, too hot. We started talking about Heaney and the car got too hot. What does that say about where George is at in his life? All right. He um, gets a little bit too excited when Isaac Heaney's discussed at any length. So value guys, that's what, that's what we're going to next. And while Heaney is a great option, there are other value guys that people should there probably are. be jumping on over Primos. There are. All right. Defenders, JD, we've got. Zach Williams, which I think most people would have. You would have been a brave fade yep. that you'd probably be happy with at this point if you did. Yep, um, I think so. Yo, who is in your team. Massimo, Yo. who's in not many teams, but one that people are heavily looking at this week. Buderick, uh, I mean, just stocks down. Let's say that right now because yep. I don't even know what he ended up on, but it wasn't much more than 10. I know it was 25 in uh, fantasy because it's the format where people seem to have him a bit. And uh, yeah, I mean, just... Quickly bring up the old Supercoat score. And then Lucky Bramble you've thrown in there, I've seen, since I last looked, which is an interesting one. Bevo has done some Bevo things round one, and he's already made about 14 questionable calls. Uh, mm-hmm. But one of them was putting Bramble to defense, and he had a good role and, and performed, you know, fantasy and Supercoat scoring-wise, decent in. So I think he turned up in the end, right? Right? Or... I Close believe two. so, yeah, or, or thereabouts. Uh, and he had, had some he kick-ins. led their kickins, had yeah, five wow. of uh, twelve, I think it was. Uh, you know, leading leading out Bailey Dale, so that's you know pretty good numbers. Uh, so who's so the yeah, he, up? Him or, so, or Massimo? It oh, might be him just because he's out of nowhere. <laughs> Bramble wasn't on my list previously, so <laughs> I guess it's yeah, it's him or Massimo. I mean, Massimo went one twenty. So Bramble's on here is just a watch, but Massimo at his price being what 220k and having a 122 yep. in his system, I think it's the biggest stocks up. The red flag I have on Massimo, I went from very keen to bring him in this week to um, being somewhat cautious, is that really his game time was as a winger, not really as a half back. And while it's great to see that scoring like that, and wings can definitely go on heaters for for a period of time. Um, the first score is the one that counts the least for the price rise. You only get one movement out of that 40, 50 K and then it's gone. So if he drops a 60 this week and then a 60 the week after you might get one good price rise out of him and then he plateaus. So I really just want to see if he can sustain the scoring in that wing role. Sicily out for the week might help. Um, but who knows? I mean, it's not like Sicily was taking many points last week. So uh, yeah, Massimo stocks up, but still a watch. And then Bramble has the role, but wasn't on our radar. And who knows what Bevo's going to do because you had Daniel out of the side, well, as a sub, and then McRae out of the side. But, yeah, he's, I guess, stocks up because he's made it from, um, I don't know why they picked him up to, okay, well, <laughs> well, we'll watch this week. We'll see what Bramble's up to when we watch the Dogs game. Yeah. How much is he? Like three something. So Yeah, yeah at that, like 290 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so um, it's a bit of an awkward price point, especially once the year gets underway, but. One just yep. to have on your watch list. And then, look, stocks down, obviously, Buderick. I think we'd both say trading him out is fine, given he's on the bubble. And it was, a, I think it was a 17 that he scored or an 11. <laughs> I can't remember. It was bad. Um, so, yeah, so uh, 17. So he's out. But then just quickly talk to me about uh, Williams and how you're feeling about him two weeks into the year. Uh, he obviously has the potential to score. I'm just not sure if it will come yet like i can see him doing this sort of stuff for maybe a few more weeks the buy's coming maybe a good time for him he's got a couple of runs under the belt he gets a week off uh and then he comes back out afterwards uh, and can um they can see how he's feeling then and see you know if he's got more match fitness he probably certainly does i mean he's scoring fine through three quarters it's like we'd be taking some 70s here if he was able to score in in the last 30 minutes of the game but he Mm. hasn't done that two weeks in a row so i think there's still potential there of course so it's kind of annoying that massimo will play this week and then as williams is off by massimo will be on the bubble and it's sort of like i wanted to see just one more game from williams and then you could maybe make that switch if needed but but massimo will be will be rising that same week so it's tough because if Massimo goes really well and you don't have another way to get him and Williams is your only yep. way, would you do that? That's just hypothetical. I mean, so if, Massimo if, goes if, well. Yeah, if Mass went 120 again, <laughs> I'd be scrambling to find ways to get him into my side. I think a lot of people have both Gibkiss and Reed, and one of those might go out this week, but the other one probably remains in the team. So I imagine what a lot of people do is hold Williams find and just find cash. a way to yeah, find yeah. It, some cash, which I'm all for it's because defense rookies look bad. But yeah. um 
Yeah, yeah. I, I could see if, like, absolute last result, people going Williams to Massimo. I have a feeling it might backfire because now, like, two games of William playing it out, it may, even maybe when they were planning to sub him, but getting that match fitness and having the buy to refresh it, I surely he's got to come out firing this next week. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I can see that happening for sure. Uh, okay, uh, that's the defender sort of value picks um, in the midfield, and there is a lot. Um, there is quite a lot. So we've got anywhere from sort of, you know, 210K to, you know, in the midfield, it's probably almost up to, to 500. It is because I think Nick Martin's our first one. I think he's 490. So it's him, Wines, Bonner, Sam Berry, uh, Matt Crouch. This is in order of ownership. Um, Maxi Holmes, George Hewitt. Carl Amon, which when I was doing this, uh, putting the list together, surprise only like one point five percent of teams. Some, some, I feel like it's Crazy eight. Low. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely more. Every I Carl Amon like owner is very loud. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Georgie Wardlaw, who's in a few teams. Uh, Horn Francis. Oh yeah, these one we we added on later. So they're in quite a few more teams than the name on. Uh, and then Jared Lyons, who I did forget, yeah. uh, is in quite a few. What's his ownership? Um, I think it's about nine and a half, ten percent. Nine and a half, and he's so, he's. Out of this group, he'd be the one with the lowest break even, just given he's played two games as well, but obviously into the bye this into week. Into the bye. So, rises and fallers, um, who have you pegged out in this group to uh, to have risen the most and then one that you're really not too confident anymore? Uh, so, I'd say overall, like more losses here than than wins, it uh, uh, feels like. Surprise, um, surprise. It's kind yeah, of- <laughs> it, it tends to happen. So, because, you know, a lot of them played the role that we want, but either didn't play it well or just didn't get enough of it. Uh, so, like, didn't get enough of it could be those, like, wines, uh, maybe even, like, Crouch, who scored all right, but, like, low time on ground. Um, uh, Hewitt, like, you know, there's a few of them. Amon was another one, probably had the role, but just wasn't getting enough at the sharing around a bit too much. Martin had the role, but didn't execute. So, yeah, really tricky. Uh, and then guys like Bonner had the role and executed, but the concern here was always around what happens with Sinclair next week, not around whether or not he'd be good last week, uh, at least for me. Um, and then, yeah, like a few extra ones here, like Wardlaw had a very good first half, but then faded away. I don't know, I don't know if that's because of where he's at with conditioning. And then uh, Horn Francis was added here just because George could not stop talking about him as like going that as a pot option. And it would have been better than Barry and a lot of these other guys. And then Lyons, I think, has done nothing to hurt, in, hurt himself. In Why are you always going to take a swipe at Barry and for? Because he's garbage. He's not even the best Barry to discuss this week, which is crazy in the league. Like three of them. Um, so, yeah. So then, um, uh, yeah, I gave you the Hornet to talk about. You know, we set you up for Heaney, set you up for Hornet. You know, we delay the whole session. We just fill space until you come back from your overheated phone. Um, we don't care about any of these guys. And then, yeah, Lions, I think, is the one maybe the most interesting because I've definitely been dismissive of him because it's like I want to make sure he gets to that third game and potentially the fourth and fifth. Lions have been bad, but Lions himself, I think, has been pretty good in that midfield over these first couple of weeks. So, yeah, whether or not he holds or whether they readjust the side and he's the one that falls, even though it's probably not due to his own fault, I think that's the part I'm still curious about. But one one to look at off his buy and once teams are named, I think they're the first game of the week off their buys. I, the other thing that does worry me a little bit is he's still at like the 50% CBA mark, uh, and that's even with Neil out. So, yeah, curious to see how that changes. Yep. I know you can't see the list, George, but any of the mid-price sort of mids, you know, 200 and... 10k to about 500 that you have risen the most on so one you're really confident in you you like the performance or role and one that you've um lost some, lost some confidence in i need another week um i don't understand Lyon's job security i don't know if he's sub risk or not and he should be a good pick negative 44 break even if he holds i'm tempted but i don't know if i should go there or not and then Bonner, I want to yep. see with Sinclair. Yep. Um, other than that, like the mid price midfielders are not super appealing. Should have just gone guns and rookies or like 500k <laughs> value guys. It looks like yeah. wines. I'm getting out of wines. I'm not dealing with 70 tog and 50% CBAs. If that keeps if that keeps up. Yeah, I'm, I'm with wines. Uh, obviously. Wasn't great. The I mean, look, he every time you know most of the time he's on the field. He's playing midfield. He just was off the field more than we thought he'd be. Um, 
preseason game was hard to get a read because of butters going out. But my concern maybe is like Jackson Mead actually got 30, what thirty five percent CBAs. Like a lot of these teams were seeing like Gold Coast, um, Frio did it too with their four mids. It's, just, it's like four mid rotation is is really what you want because you got one guy getting fifty and you got three other guys getting what you know seventies to eighties depending where they all land at. Like that ideal and and we thought wines would be one of those top three guys uh i just think maybe they treated it and it sounds disrespectful but more like their their last preseason game <laughs> as bad as that sounds but they should have won by 120 points they piled on like 14 goals i think it's a most behinds in port history in an afl game like they kick straight that that's almost 200 points there um uh or not quite but are they going to do that in a full game against, uh, look, we're not the best team in the world, but are they going to give me more CBAs when, you know, they're up against a team that might put more of a fight in than, than the Eagles? We'll see. So I'm not, yeah, I wouldn't jump off wines yet. Any here that you would instantly jump off? I guess obviously Nick Martin's the one that everyone, like he's probably Go one on. of the most straight out players. Okay. <laughs> um, and there'll be differ, differing opinions there. Um so JD's going to have to stamp his ground, I think, here and say why you would keep him. And then, George, you can say why why you could trade him because I think that's where you two sit. So what did you say, uh, JD? Uh, I, think, I mean, I think the reason why people want to trade him is just because they need to free up cash to do other stuff. And if they really want to, I'm not going to stand in their way. The positives for Martin is we saw the role that we wanted to see. The negatives were that he just wasn't very good at using it this week at all. Um, what I've seen out of him in the past, especially as a winger, is not ball use. That that's bad. So I don't expect it to continue. But if we saw that again for second week, I think we'd all be jumping off. So this is definitely high alert, ready to go, lost confidence in the pick. But I don't think it's must have bought. I'd rather wait and see another week than just jump off now. What's your reasoning, George, for well, is <clears throat> jumping off? Well, I, JD started off saying that we need to pull money from somewhere, basically. And I'm going to take it out of Nick Martin, who's speculative at this stage. He could be good. If he's great, we'll jump on him later, maybe. But I'm not taking any chances. I'm getting out and grabbing. I think I'm turning him into Sarong. Okay. So we can talk about it that towards the end. But yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think you've yeah. got other guys like Fisher that are safer what to was- jump off. Okay, we can talk about that later then when we get to Fisher as well. But with Martin, yeah. Do we know the kickers? So do we know the kickers? Do we know the kickers? Uh, well, it's Redmond, but he might get. A, he's got a week, right? He, so he does have a week. Yep. Um, um, be interesting to see who actually replaces him with. Um, there's a few teams that are interesting watches for team sheets this week. Freo is obviously the big one. I think Essendon a little bit as well. Uh, Guelphie also got injured with a calf, and then Reed's out. So how they actually replace those three? Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, so Redmond took the most kickouts. He had six of 16, I believe, for Essendon. Uh, then McGrath with five. Then Martin had three. He played all, all three, though. So at least he's learned that. Yeah. Hawks missed every set shot known to man. So, yeah, um, that's very inaccurate. Uh, yeah. And Martin um, fluffed a kick in as well. He like. He did. He's very first, first one. one it's at the tone. It's at the tone. It's at the tone. We need a we need TV a, off right there. <laughs> need a confidence I, kick this week to get him started. I don't think he's a must jump off at this like right now, but I just think the no. opportunities out there are just too good. So that's why I'm it's definitely off. A, so it's definitely a team dependent. Just your opinion dependent. Like I don't think he could turn into good, some good form. I don't think he'll turn into form that will warrant warrant like must get instantly back into your team, you know, form. So I think for me, that's just a spot in my midfield. I'd probably want to free up to someone else, reinvest his money elsewhere. If he goes good again and looks good, you know, we can definitely get him back in once he has defender status. And I guess look how the whole defender line looks as a whole, because maybe he's averaging a hundred, but there's, you know, better picks still there. So yeah, I, look, I still think he, I mean, I love Nico since day game one. He's been really good ever since he came into the league, but it's, I don't want to go too deep into this because we're talking about super coach, but is Brad Scott trying to manufacture something here out of nothing that just shouldn't have been done in the first place? I don't know. Time will tell on that. And I think that's where I sit now that I was oh, so close to doing before the game and saying, just let's just watch this and then see if it eventuates and more than happy to grab him. 
later on at maybe you know 50k more so yeah i'm painful that i did end up starting him but it might be just a trade i do now and free up some trades for next week i mean i don't think it's painful like you know, we talk about process over outcome. I think it's the right process. Like we saw the role. role Only painful because I was just he was he was honestly yeah. out of my team, JD, and came back here, yeah. and that's why it's painful. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to say oh, stupid pick, you idiot. Like you obviously, yeah, had, there was reasoning for it. So, yeah, I mean, painful. It's same in that thing, sense. like same thing, like wines, right? Like mm. Ken Hinckley's usually straight shooter. We saw the league TBA role in the preseason as well. He's done it in the past. Like all the logic was there. And then you come to game day and they're like done something slightly different. And you're like, well, is this well, a Juan Francis or number one? And yeah, yeah, exactly. Rosie and Butters at 60. So I think that's maybe some more fakeness. We'll see. But again, yeah, I think yeah. both of them, you can look. I wouldn't trade wines because he's probably more route to getting some decent scores in the near future. But hey, no, he's gone for me next week. Yeah, you, you because can do George, he's. Just a shooter, so he'll pull the trigger whenever he wants. But because it's a useless pick now, because he's not making money, he's not a keeper. So what's the point of this? And it's best 18s. Like I'm splitting him into Massimo and I don't know five four lions or something. George's got know. three weeks of trade planned already. Um, no, he's gone. I why wouldn't you do him first if he's useless that. and Martin has the possibility, George, of being a keeper? Why'd you do uh, Martin first and not Wines this week then? As a trader, because I sort of know what I, I think I know what I'm going to get from wines. Are you trying to play a one week score? Are you like give or take five points of a hundred? Which I guess is not the worst, but it, if the Tog and CBAs keep up, then like he's not making money, he's not a keeper. What am I? What's the point? I can get someone in that slot that's going to make 150k. Like, yep. I don't understand. Do you think it could just be the week one? Hot day against West Coast. They were literally all in second gear. Maybe if that, and it could be. Yeah, like if he he's done one hundred eight after his Brownlow year when he had good CBAs, and obviously they got more mids now. So I'll get another look at the Toggin CBAs. But if they're the same as this week, then I'm pulling the trigger. All right, we've spent too long. Do we want to talk about anyone else on this list before we move on? Um, out of interest, maybe. Oh. No, I think the biggest watch for me is like probably Bonner this week just to see what happens with Sinclair back on the side. If Sinclair gets moved into the midfield and Bonner's still playing the role he did half, like last week, he probably moves up you know, very high in the list of must-haves, I would say. So, yeah, it's probably the biggest one from the mids. Yep. Uh, okay, Ruck's sort of mid-price. Cherry, I think we touched yep. on him obviously we said before. said looks good, but trade Granny to him next week if you have to. Yep, let's get another look at him. I think he did well in the fourth quarter, right? When it was dead, didn't get much super coach I, for he it. He played but... well for all of it, but I think in the fourth okay. quarter yeah. he got he did chuck on a bunch extra. Yeah, he's good good follow up work around stoppage, and it was a very low stoppage game, so probably yep. positive signs um, in high stoppage games he can score well. Yep. Okay, uh, and then the forwards, the, the the dreaded forwards. There's a few uh, value picks here. Zach Fisher. We will have to talk about J- James Jordan. Fife, Jackie Billings, James Harms, and and Cam McKenzie. So look, stocks down. Off. I'll start it off with James Harms, who was trash. Woof. Somehow wasn't subbed off, and Woof. then got suspended. So yeah, what a pick up the chomp chomp from uh, the dogs. Uh, not a good start for him. And then Cam McKenzie, I think attended a few CBAs early, but and sort of reverted back to his normal role. Sammy Mitchell, Sammy Mitchell at this Wait. stage, and what did he score in the end, JD? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he's um his CBAs were thirty two. I'll have a look at uh, like thirty two percent. I'll have a look. Fifty seven. Yeah. So I mean, and the big thing for Hawks is that one of the things that they prided themselves on last year, and especially towards the end of the year, was um, stoppage dominance, and they got crushed by Essendon, um, who haven't necessarily been particularly well known for this. Like absolutely dominated. And that was without the Parish. So. I assume further changes happening to the midfield. I don't think C Mac did particularly a lot in there. And, you know, broken tackles and not sticking tackles were probably some of the biggest complaints. And with the smaller body, that's gonna be he's gonna be one of the ones that struggle with that. So yeah, cool. stocks down, harms, McKenzie, no problem. And then the leader of either of those. Of the stocks down club is Zach Fisher. So take it away. Cause I didn't this for the one game I sort of didn't really watch. Didn't I wasn't able to. So yeah, it's interesting. I've heard lots of like different takes from different people on this. Like there was definitely some um missed opportunities. I'm curious to see what uh George saw in this game as well. Uh but like, you know, definitely preference to get it through Sheasel's hand and go out that side. McKercher, 
was demanding it and going through Sheasel's side as well. And then Fisher kind of was stuck on the other side and they weren't necessarily switching to him as much. Um, quite a free-flowing game. Uh, and then you had Bailey Scott that also came back and was taking kick-ins as well. He led North with six, uh, where I think we've seen Fisher take a lot more previously in the preseason. So didn't go through his side. Um, yeah, hurt. Bailey Scott back hurt. Uh, does he score this poorly week in, week out? No. But I also have quickly formed the view, which I'm, I want to be challenged. I want to, like, whether you guys hold the same view is he's not really going to make money at his price. And he's also not going to be a keeper. I think very, very unlikely he is a keeper. So is this the value guy that makes the most sense to trade out this week and cash in? Uh, because guys like Martin, I can still kind of rebound, see rebounding. Wines is going to put okay enough scores on the field, I think. But Fisher's the one for me that I'm like really out on this. So yeah, how, how are you guys feeling about Fisher? You got George? Yeah, he's gone. Um, well, is it, what's interesting is he did this last year in his four games, I think it was four games at Carlton, where he'd go 50, then 100, then 60, then 100 or something like that. So probably bounce back next week under the deck or under the roof at Marvel. <laughs> One 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 twenty six fifty three ninety six sixty one. <laughs> yeah, so probably, probably what we can expect, really. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was hard to watch. First few touches, hit two Giants plays on the lead. Couldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> and then I didn't even see him in the second half. So, I think there's also significant injury risk. And um, I know it's weird because I'm trading him to Billings, whereas Billings is. Te- well, technically got a worse role. Um, but at least I like Billings as a player. I think he's a good player. Where I think it's like 130 is not a good player. player. And, yeah. yeah. One, one, 130 yeah. cheaper, whatever it is. So it frees up money to do other things. And he's obviously got the 120 and his price rises now for a couple of weeks. Yep. Yeah. And they're sharing the kick in so much too. Like Scott, Sheasel preferred to. McKercher can take a few. Course taken some. There's five players taking kick ins back there. Um. Yeah, there's too many scorers back there, and it might be one day that yeah Fisher gets all the usage, and then some days there might not be. And um, I don't know, on that performance, I'll, if he keeps dishing that up, he'll be dropped, I think. So uh, yep. yeah, like, like similar with Nick Man, I see him as speculative, so I'm happy to jump off to say Billings, who's done 85s in the past in this role. And uh, Sarong, who's like a max CBA's player. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, maybe jumping early on Sarong, but I think I'm turning two speculative picks into a cash maker and a premium. So I'm actually advancing the team, unless Nick Martin ends up a keeper, but that's the route I'm going. Yeah, just ball usage, sharing down back, durability is still there. I don't know why I picked him, but here we are. Yeah. Um, I did, I, like I said, I didn't watch the game. I curiously clicked on his, you know, on the app. You can search for a player in the stacks section. Click on, uh, I said this on my video, watch, you know, watch their sort of highlights. I saw the first two you're talking about, George, and I just, I just turned the highlights off. <laughs> just couldn't be bothered watching Jack, Zach Fisher highlights from a 50 super coach score performance. So um, it is quite a tricky one. I think he might have more potential than Nico to bounce back just immediately this week. Like, I don't know, Nico on their CG, Swan's really, you know, hot form right now. They might, um, you know, really move the ball well around him and not give him much opportunity, whereas Fisher can just, you know what it's like, do what he did in the preseason and just spam a heap of kicks, try to avoid the opposition um, as best he can and, and, you know, pump out a decent score. So, like, immediately I think maybe Fisher can ba- has more chance of bouncing back. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't look one week, but I don't really see him as a keeper anymore. It's just that he still could be due to the the forward landscape, and if he uh, just doesn't start, yeah, or just doesn't keep kicking it to the opposition. So look, I don't know. Um, I think Fisher and Martin are probably the two main ones, especially in our community. I think a lot of people started them. Um, that have sort of the biggest question marks. And it's like really, it's a really early, like, you know, crossroad here, whether you trade them or not <laughs> right here in round two. 
um, and it, and it could um, you know I don't I don't think you'll get punished either way. Like I think you know if they pay poor again, whatever you trade them next week, and if I don't think they can both go insane to where if you do trade them out this week, you'll get totally punished for it. So I think it's just where you're um, you know how tolerable you can be to, to these two guys um, in the short term. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think George is punting both. I've definitely looked at doing the same. Uh, it's just sort of what am I getting? You know, what I'm what I'm getting in is it is it completely worth doing it this week? And I think, um, you know, I have Gibkiss to trade, so you know, it's probably most likely a boost doing all those three out straight away. Is that worth it? Um, is that something you want to do straight away? If it's actually improving your team, then then yeah, there's merit for it. So, where do you sit at the moment, JD, with those two? Uh, really going to be our biggest question. Oh, Fisher, Fisher and Martin. Martin. Yeah. As... Uh, yeah. It's, like, it's really tricky. Uh, like, if, I think the big, thing for, yeah, the, big, the big thing for me is like I want to set myself up in a position where I can make th- three trades next week. And so if there's any obvious trades for me this week, I want to bank them now. Um, so I don't end up in the position where a lot of people ended up last year where you had like four or five targets that you wanted, but only three trades with the boost. And that meant some people missed out on Chandler or Zebul or something like that last year. And the one that they missed was the one that ended up being one of the best picks of the year. And I think like two of those that people did jump on, like Setterfield and Warple, ended up not being as good, but they were the more obvious ones. So people missed a Chandler or they missed a Zebul and they were like, really big picks last year. So I'm, I'm conscious of that. And I feel like we could be in the same boat this year where there's rookies or mid prices or premiums that we feel like we have to jump on next week. So I want to have all three trades available to me. Um, so uh, that means if I have to get rid of both of them to make the three trades I want to happen this week happen, I am okay with it. In an ideal world, I probably hold on to both and do nothing, but I think I've missed probably a couple of the rookies I need to jump onto, so I can't. Um, and then if I can trade just one and hold one, I'd rather trade Fisher and hold Munn. I am fairly confident Fisher won't be top six forward now, uh, where there's still the slimmest of chances that Martin fixes things this week and ends up being worthwhile. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I have Fisher as out, Martin as second out, I'd ideally hold both and see another week, but I think the bigger priority is setting myself up to be able to do three good trades next week too. And if that means I have to jump off one of them now to facilitate that, then I will take that risk. Yep. No worries. Um, any other guys we want to quickly mention here? Most probably should. I think Jordan, we all have. And I think, look, he's not like absolute must have if you don't have, but I would still probably be considering it. Um, but I think everyone has has him in our community hopefully uh five jd i know you're nodding your head and smiling yeah he almost um, got my mvp of the week the two old boys yo and five oh, yeah how did been he? hating on my picks how did yeah yo actually saved me in a different way that was structural structural based and the fact that he like matched or went slightly better than wines just makes it oh, oh tasty um but yeah five oh how could you not be impressed with what you saw out of the weekend for five um it looks like he still has it. as long as he stays fit he actually could be a keeper you think so? Okay. I, he had 78% CBAs in the end. I know that probably wasn't the plan because uh, they definitely were resting him forward at, at the time. But how if he gets 80% CBAs, how does he not go 85-90? Yeah, you're probably right. It's just, I guess it's, the question is, what is a top six forward this year? Sort of the no, bottom end. I, like I've got, I've got the bottom end of top six being low, but you yeah. know, all of five billings, Jordan could a- effectively challenge that. And maybe even Fisher could come back and challenge that really. But... Um, yeah, I, I think that's it, just depends on what that looks like because uh, I don't think the DPP is going to be there this year. We haven't seen guys being mm. introduced. I mean, maybe you, I was gonna say, maybe we get McRae comes back and plays forward, but I realize he's already <laughs> eligible there, so I don't even know who it would be. Not even gonna play, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, George, as a fellow, no, 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 what did you see with Fife and what do you think going forward? Oh, that was the only game I didn't watch. Okay. Um, I'd, Fair enough. Which is ironic because I'm bringing Sarong without even watching. But <laughs> um, look, uh, yeah, the top I did was watch very it. High. It's it's funny because like D's is the only game I didn't watch. And I'm bringing Billings as well. <laughs> uh, I'm not bringing anyone from the game I didn't watch. Um, 
look, he looks definitely looked good in the contest. Like Jedi, you watch that game, you're not gonna come away with any other opinion than that. Like he was in and under winning it for the other guys. Um it's just a matter of yeah, I, I, like I sent it, I think I sent it to you guys today or in, in our chat at least. There was 10 goals, I think, kicked in the last quarter. You know, a bit of junk time stuff. And because Young went back, Fife, Brayshaw, and Sarong. I think Sarong maybe a couple less, but like Fife and Brayshaw got like nine CBAs in the last. And I think previous to that, there was maybe only like 15 in the game up until that point or maybe a couple more than that. So it's like almost like a third of the game's CBAs were there. So look, look, what does he peg at? Maybe 70% or something? Like it's still a pretty bloody good number. Um, and their plan is clearly to have him in there um, more often than not. So look, I think Freo is like the biggest watch team sheet wise, game wise this week, um, just for a number of reasons. And um, yeah, I think Fife, they're going to want to keep him in there. Um, he was just, he just played really well. Um, I think it was his first, I think someone tweeted his first ton in about, Three years, super coach ton. So, is he back? Well, you know, or is he, is he just back for this week? I mean, he had three holding the balls. I will, I will just mention that slightly. Yeah, um, but you also had moments where like Jackson handballed it into his feet where he could have had a running shot at goal. You know, I mean, the game was done at that point, but like there was stuff yeah. like that that went against him as well. And there are other tackles that he could have got holding the ball for that weren't called. Like, I, like, yeah, anyway. Um, he could have gone bigger than what he did. Yeah, yes, yeah, so everyone agree. gets those opportunities. Yeah. But I think if you don't have him, George, do you just do you just wait another week and then see if you're forced into it? I think or I do you... it's yeah, a leave it down. forever. <laughs> yeah, the the role is a lot better. Like yeah, eighty percent CBA, eighty plus percent tog threw me a bit. Um, I don't know if that's sustainable for him at his age. I think I'd play the don't think he'll hold up for however long. Good, great starting pick. Uh, I don't know if I trade into it or not. I think I anti pod. Yeah, mm, there's going to be a paid for one though. Cool. And then we can talk about billings in a little bit. Let's get to some sort of. Oh, we actually, no, we better talk about him now because the rest is just pure rookies. So billings is probably one of the. Most traded in players without uh, having a look at this current point in time. Um, I see a lot of people with cash in the bank, you know, similar amount to myself, being able to just to give us straight to Billings. Um, as sort of then, you know, their go to trade this week. I mean, that game was pretty ridiculous. Uh, it's the one you didn't catch, JD. 15 marks are here for Billings. It's a sustainable the, number that will likely be repeated. Yeah, the dog, I mean, we didn't ever expect 120s from Billings. Um, 140 dream team. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I mean, I always thought he could do 80, you know, 80 something um, in that realm. Um, and then obviously the sub pulled us away from that, but he just was given no opponent. He just tugged up along the boundary line and they continued to find him all day and the dogs refused to man it up. Uh, and they refused to man anyone up for that matter. Um, I think the D's had 140 marks or something, which is just a stupid number. Um, it's like even worse than some preseason kick to kick game. Like that was that was pretty pretty piss poor from them. So yeah, I, I actually don't know if he's as must have as pe- some people might be pegging him as. I mean, his break even is now five. It's pretty much now or never. The eleven rolls off next week. He'll be obviously a bit more expensive than what he is now. How in you know on this pick are you, JD? Are you what level of must do you think he he sits at? Billings, yeah. uh, it's very annoying because he was obviously sub and Goodwin is awful. I, but I was on the pick all <laughs> preseason because I thought he actually solved the problem for the Ds. Then them not picking him round one, confusing, or uh, well, round zero, confusing. Uh, and then round two, they, oh, sorry, round one. Ah, oh, man, these far <laughs> out. Round one, the second game of the year, they include him. And it looks like he delivered on what I thought he might be able to deliver for them um, as a side. So it, it really is confusing for me because uh, haven't, haven't, have you got score involvements in front of you? I do not have it. Um, um, but I think it was nice, right? Like it was a big number as well. Anyway, so... Probably. They were, yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, tricky one here. They even had the interviews with him after the match, which suggests that maybe he's gone up in their pecking order a little bit, although the social media guy probably doesn't have much of a say over how that works out. But 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Like the 119s in his average now, and uh, just having a look at his projections, where are they at? I think it's a couple I have of 60s. A... What, sorry? I think a couple 60s have him going up like... Oh, a 66 80. and a 60 have him going up. Yeah, about, about that. Uh, about 75k or something like that but i would imagine he gets more than a 60 this week against the hawks given what we saw Essen do against them like sardis in that second half alone put on 60 super coach and like 40 fantasy so uh yeah i i think billings is someone that can easily make us 100 to 150k kind of prior to his buy in round six and then we move him on for someone like a flanders coming off his buy or a heaney coming off his buy if you don't have those two so I like the Billings pick, but I am also now wary of the fact that I've got a lot of these mid-price guys in my forward line, Fife, Jordan, Billings, and no one really to offload them to. George, what do you sit with Billings? You watch that game. Yeah, he pretty much dominated. Missed a few kicks, but uh, the way I like to play is or play the game is I look at past starter a lot and are they in a similar role? Are they, you know, Good age, have they had a full preseason? And Billings kind of ticks all those boxes. Obviously, the role's not like traditionally good for super coach, but he's done like look at his past few years when he's been fit. He's done this like he's had these spike games and averaged 85 to 90. And I think he was he used to be a 500k forward starter. And yeah, I think we had him for from December until he was sub. So I think we kind of just want to correct that, or me personally. I don't think he's must-have, but he's one where I'm probably going to keep him beyond the buy and then just upgrade to the proven mids and defenders and see what happens with the forward line because, yeah, again, like, who are we upgrading him to? Um, but he looks yep. good. He covers – he works really hard and they want the ball in his hands. And, yeah, obviously, outside game is fantastic. So just quietly, this would have been a wild fantasy pod he was only 3% in that format, and he got a 140 DT. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. But, yeah, I'm bringing him in. I do like him, but you got to weigh up. Is he going to make as much money as some of these rookies, like a, a Dempsey or a, I don't know who else, like Carroll or something? They could make just as much money. But I do like him, so I'll, I'll bring him in. I'd probably even tip him to make, for the rookies to make more, to be honest. Um, than Billings. Yeah. I mean, just... it's it's definitely easy, but it's the points on field as well, right? Correct. Um, and he could spike, like George says. He does have some spike games in him. Um, these fixture, I haven't actually really looked at Hawks, too much. Hawks well, it's Hawks and the then G. Port, and then what about further yeah. on? So Port, I imagine, will be hard. And then I think he's got um, Adelaide after that. Uh, and then yeah. round oh, the five. double. Double That's AO, possible. they stay in Adelaide the days and yeah. back to back. Um, but then so they've got yeah, super easy. Lions, Lions at the G round five. That's a cakewalk, surely. Yeah, the way they're in, and then us the round after. So look, yeah, I do like him. I liked his game the weekend. I obviously don't think he'll get that much freedom that he did against the Dogs ever again. But you never know. There are some strange coaches in this league that. Don't decide to do anything once the guys just like that. You look at his heat map, JD. I won't bring it up because I know how to do it quickly, but it's genuinely like just dots around the wing because every time it was transitioning, he was just there and he'd go and get it. He'd kick the next guy, he'd go down and he'd be there again along the wing. And it's like dogs just did not care yeah. to man him up. And look, that doesn't give him a lot of super coach, that stuff. Like, you know, it's good for fantasy, but it's not very big super coach points. But outside of that, he did still play well and like actually entering forward 50. Uh, I think it was 10 score involvements. I just got it up before. So, like, he was obviously good as well in other parts of the ground. But it was funny to watch some of those transitions where he just would have three touches down the wing and they did not give a, give a single stuff about manning him up. All right. So, we've already hit uh, an hour and 15 minutes. So, we better quickly talk about some rookies, talk about what we're doing with trades or thinking at this early stage of the week and then some vice captains and captains. So, um, we're going to go through each line, who you think the must-have rookies are and then who you think can trade if um, if needed. So I think defense is, I mean, it's just blown up in a week, um, in a week or two. You know, it's gone from maybe, you know, people starting only three defenders, you know, some people, you know, Z will at D3 or something stupid, D4 probably most likely. But now it's like, you know, you can't do that anymore. Um, 
So I think, look, Howes, Hoare, Dean, Yulin, Gibkiss, obviously, is a trade out. Uh, Caulfield, Pink, and then Reed is the other one that, um, look, he's not an instant trade out. I think, what's the word, JD? Maybe two or three weeks, but it's just a recurring problem for him that it's it's tough to see him being not rushed back, but coming back really anytime too soon. So Gibkiss obviously stocks down and just not because he was poor because he's gone for the year. And then Reed is, is the second one there. Anyone else that stocks down just from based on performance role, anything like that you saw JD? From defender rookies. I mean, defender rookies, the whole just awful, uh, the two best performing ones were, were in the game that I didn't watch, which was Hor and Howes. So, uh, and then like even Caulfield, you may have put in there as the third one. Dean had some all right moments, I guess. Like that's probably the only interesting one that's on the bubble this week, but almost it feels like everyone else I'm off. Uh, it makes it really tricky because I, I think you really only want to have two defenders on your bench, which is Hor and House, and then not have anyone on the field. But um, a lot of people obviously <laughs> stuck instruction out. So Gibkiss, I think, is pretty safe to trade. Reed's the interesting one. I think um, he at least does have the job security and the scoring potential that maybe some of these others don't. So unless uh, one of the other defender rookies, like say Pink goes 100 this week, well, I'll be going Reed to Pink. No worries, because I'm going to at least get some easy cash out of that. But otherwise, I think I'm more tempted to hold Reed at the moment and fix trades elsewhere. But um, yeah, it's just kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. You guys any different? I think we said all the ones that are going down. What did you see from Marty Hoare and, and Blake Howes, George? I think they worked into the game pretty well. Hall was flying yeah. intercepts. So I think the spike game is going to happen sooner than later, sooner rather than later. So I think you need, I think we all have Howes. And Hall was like a tough one. You needed to react to, well, not really, but if you were across his VFL form and previous AFL form, um, you had to react to that one and get him in. So you can correct that to get rid of Gibkiss or Reed. If you have other pressing issues and you don't want to go from Reed to Massimo, or you don't like pink or whatever, I think you can leave Reed there and prioritize elsewhere. Um, yep. Not confident he comes, like, I don't know, his body's just been, he's had a really rough run. So you just kind of hope that, like, I think he had a pretty good preseason. So hopefully he comes back and makes some sort of money. But you yeah, definitely, I think, target Massimo and. Massimo can probably wait a week, but uh, Hoare, I would go early on. Yep, I think I agree. I mean, Coffield's we all got him whatever. into our team. Coffield's whatever. I think the defender rookie corrections, just, there's so much other stuff to correct in the mids and forwards if you want. I think you can wait a week and get another look at Massimo. Like last resort, Toby Pink. So I think just I would wait on that for a week unless you need to get Hoare in. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'd. I'd be happy to park some of the read trades and for later. Like there's, as you said, a lot more value on offer elsewhere, um, quicker cash uh, at, on the you know the other lines that Reed can stay at D8 for a while. And if there's someone that pops up later down the track that's worthwhile, you can do it then. Or if you're in such a good position, you've got everyone that's making money, you can you can obviously uh, trade him out then. But um, I mean, there's even more guys I didn't mention. Like Warner looked good till three quarter, about three quarters in, until he got severely KO'd. So I think he got scaled up to like sixty something in the end, and that was, you know, there was a quarter left in that game, uh, or at least a large majority of it. Um, so he had that. Um, oh, there's heaps of the game left. Yeah, it was like quarter and a half left. He had that sort of uh, Wagner role from last year, right? They went with him, and then Wagner's out for like two months. So. Hopefully he's not out for too long, Warner, but, uh, but it was a huge hit. Um, so hopefully he's, he's all right. But, and yeah. are you looking at getting him in for Reed? Oh, I was thinking, I mean, I was looking about it getting, you know, obviously you've seen him next week. We're or desperate week for anyone. <laughs> he looked bloody good. So poor Bass got absolutely cleaned up by, by Link. Um, but he was good. So, yeah. Fair going to have to find someone else to play there. How bad was the KO? Is he, you know, going to be out for a couple of weeks? Probably it was pretty bloody huge, but he was up and talking and walking and got back on the bench. So maybe it's not as bad as we think, but he obviously has to miss a week anyway. Uh, all right, let's get off the defender rookies. A bit depressing. Um, the mid rookies, uh, McKercher, <laughs> Sanders, Roberts, 
Sharp, Carroll, and Ware. And then there's probably, I think there's maybe a couple more that play, that, but just not really too uh, too relevant. Um, but is anyone here must have? JD, and who would it be? And then is McCurcher uh, obviously is the must have. You would have been a fool not to start him, right? It's just crazy <laughs> how obvious he was as a pick going into the team playing the role where Sheasel averaged 100 last year with you know the same pedigree. It'd be wild not to start this pick. Couldn't imagine it myself, but yeah. um, there's probably some out there. Uh, uh, unfortunate, but I mean, there were content creators out there spruiking picks like Sam Berry, and like that can get very confusing <laughs> as you right, get towards enough. lockout. So <laughs> it is, it is hard. I'll, I'll back you up, George. Uh, you benched him, JD, so you can shut the hell up. He's on my field, so Colby's my man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Campbell Chess is the other one. He's got a nice little thirty-eight as a bit of a throwback, but I don't think anyone's touching him. McKercher must have. Roberts, I think we'd put in the must have bracket. Just quickly um, on McKercher. Yep. If you had the money for Bonner and Bonner does well, goes like 85 plus with Sinclair, would you take Bonner or McKercher? Honestly, maybe Bonner if this role stays the same. I think it's a false That's a loaded like question. It's a bad Get question both, you because the, both is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a one or the other. It's a, you need both of them. Yeah. I wish yeah, I had the, that many mid slots. <laughs> well, why are you getting so wrong? Don't week? get so wrong, bro. You, get you a, could have that many mid slots. Get Luke Ryan. Oh, <laughs> the peroxide no, prince. No. Let's get him in. <laughs> well, I want to see what happens with Furious defense. Yeah, I just yeah, their team sheet's gonna be I think it'll be fine though. <laughs> right. Hey, oh, yeah. he'll find a way. <laughs> We were joking in Discord, like, oh, with this injury, maybe he's going to start playing more accountable. And it's like, there's no way. Even if well, even his accountable role will it's still like, be yeah, he loose will running up until he doesn't wing. have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, there's no way. Uh, as soon no as the way. ball's in his team's hand, he's like, oh, yes, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Sprint 50 meters to a yeah. back pocket. Yeah, I mean, like, so McKercher, Robert, Sanders, I mean, Sanders had a poor game, but I think they'll all still be fine rookies um, as far as the mids go. Jeremy Sharp. Did looked very good, so that's definitely big stocks up. And big then Jack Carroll yep. is uh, one as well. But you know, the only one that actually moves in price this week is Robert. So I think that's the one that you have to get on. And then everyone else can be a correction to next week if you have other pressing issues. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll move on. Got to get going. So the forward ones, there's quite a few I've listed here. Um, it's funny the forward line. You know, not many. I mean. We didn't have many premiums. I know people didn't have premiums in their team until late. Now we've got a you know a few options there, and then it's rookies galore. I mean, they're not all all the best, obviously, but um, I won't even read them out because there's like ten there. But anyone here must have um, George. Oh. Anyone must have. Oh, you go first, JD. Yep. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, um, I think Sexton was one that everyone's got, and he probably still is must have with that role. Poor game the weekend in the slot, but still negative sixty two break even coming into a price rise this week. Um, the other ones are on the bubble this week. The one that I alluded to, the best berry of the round, Tom mm-hmm. Berry, uh, one hundred and four on the weekend to back up. I think is sixty something in the first week. So now got an average of eighty three, negative seventy five break even. One, I want to go back and review the tape for myself because this was the game that I wasn't necessarily watching as much George was. So he came to hear what his opinion was, although I suspect he was watching the wrong um, Barry in that game. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's the, the one that I think... The 80 from Sam Barry I've ever seen in my life. He scored <laughs> 80, bro. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about Tom Barry. Tom Barry. Move on, um, Move on. So, yeah, I think that he's interesting at negative 75 of whether he's a must bring in this week and then Cadman was the other one um, that's on this week negative 56 I think if you don't have um, any of these guys like Sexton 1, Barry 2, Cadman 3 for me but uh, all of them seem to be pretty good options um, thoughts and feelings on these guys and obviously it's hard because they all then have the same buy as well yep everyone already has Sexton yep uh, they should Barry I'm skipping Berry. I think for me, I can pick Berry or Dempsey. And I'm going with Dempsey. So yep. that. And then Cadman. Probably wouldn't chase Cadman. I think there's every chance his break even crashes. 
against some. I don't know what his fixture is, but I assume it's not as West West Coast this week. Yeah, but like after that, post that. Yeah. Oh, uh, round four is Gold Coast, then Saints, then Carlton. Not terrible. Uh, yeah, but it's not West Coast and North again. No. I'll, um, I don't think Cadman's must have. There's other rookies you can take him on with. I think you can go for it if you want, but yeah. Um, yeah, you said it. Everyone should have uh, Sexton, Cadman. You have or you don't. I'll probably change that. Sorry. Yeah, Adam, go. A uh, Berry, Dempsey, and Cadman. I'm probably going to take Dempsey. Yep. I think if we get to that point. Yeah. Uh, with a question, that's where I'd sit as well. Yep. So, yeah, I guess like two questions are here. Like, if you don't have to make the trade off between Dempsey and Barry, you can have both. Do you see Barry as a high priority trade in this week? Is Correct. probably question one. And then question two here is how many of these guys can you have? So, can you have all of Barry, Sex, and Cadman and field the donut through the next couple of weeks? Um, or, sorry, in like two weeks' time. Uh, and then, um, you know, if you have Flanders on top of that, so you end up with like three or four of these guys, including Flanders, is that too many? So I'm keen to hear thoughts on those those two points. Uh, is pretty much what I'm toying with. You've just asked me two of my questions I'm uh, trying to answer this week because I do have Dempsey, I do have Cadman, but obviously you also have Sexton. So you're getting in Barry, you've got the four rookies down there in round well not this week but the next you'll have three on by i don't think it will matter that much um cadman also as george said could crash very easily and if he drops a 20 this week he he could very easily just be going next week after one rise Mm -hmm. um yep for sure so that might get me another play there not that not that i as i said before don't think it's going to be that bad or important to do so um in the forward line, you know, unfortunately someone like a Wilson will be stuck on my mid bench or something like that who could go quite well, uh, you know, obviously try to loop it because uh, I have Tom Green. But, um, yeah, it, it is slightly, you know, annoying that you'll have 20, you know, you'll only be out of field max of 21. But, um, you know, there's a, there's enough around the field to, to hopefully not make that, you know, too much of a... Um, poor score for the week so uh, it's more me the question is you know get that out of the way 21 i don't think i'd have too much of a problem is barry actually worth getting in like is he going to be a worthwhile pick is he going to make enough money is he going to do all this and continue to do it and it's and it's a tough one because you know certainly the role is probably the least i mean besides a lockdown back pocket the least conducive to you know consistent scoring in football really um and maybe it's better these days because you know Pressure forwards have sort of become a thing over the last four, five, six years that are really important to teams. I think, look, I've done, you know, I never thought I'd be doing this much looking into Tom Berry, but Dimmer loves him. The fans love him. Like he's, he's doing everything um, that is asked of him. He's, you know, putting on a heap of pressure, but it's more, he can do all of that and still not score any super coach points if he doesn't touch the ball and doesn't get any tackles because uh, that's all he's there to do. So, this week really suited him. Tunned up, of course. Seven tackles, 17 touches, kicked the goal. That is ne- probably never happening again this entire season. I would maybe bet on that pretty pretty uh, mm-hmm. highly. So, yeah, it's, is he going to get definitely... some 60s for us yeah. and make 100K? And then what is it beyond that? Um, I think it's pretty low risk because it's such a big a low break even that if even if he goes 40-40, you're at least getting some decent money out of him because that 100. Mm-hmm. Um it's just how far can he go? So yeah, I've said enough about Tom Berry. I don't. I, I do you have Dempsey, JD? I forgot if you do or not. I don't have Dempsey. So this right. week, one of my trade options is bringing in both Berry and Dempsey into my side. Yeah. So I can't bounce off the idea of anyone else. Of if you have Dempsey, do you get Berry as you know a possibility? I think it's you hard. would. I think you would. Yeah. Yeah. It does make the bench look weird, but we're going into best 18. And I do think yeah. that like one of these Cadman Berry types you get rid of in the next two or three weeks anyway, and it won't be that big of a deal. Um, Berry yeah, also right has forward, the, yeah. Berry has that dogs matchup this week that just saw Billings have 15 marks. So uh, I know they don't play exactly like for like roles there, but it does give me optimism <laughs> that there's probably a, another decent score um, 
in That's the works point. this week for him as well. Like this is really matchup, right? We we get a 80 out of him this week and we get 150k really easily. Correct. So yeah, this week's huge. Yeah. And and the important thing is the money comes quick. It's you know, in three weeks we get that money, we move him off, and we start upgrading early round five, round six. So I think it's worth a shot, is where I sit at the moment. Yep. Just quickly before George goes, round four. Um like uh, I know it's Sexton, Cadman, Berry on by. I'll just sit Cadman and, and Berry on the bench, right? Obviously, Sexton's the one happy to field. So I don't because round four is not best 18, right? Round round three, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but round four when you have to play. Everyone, oh right, right, yeah. I'm happy, you know, Cadman and Berry. You would you would sit and Sexton. You would play, and you know, I'm happy to field Dempsey at, at five if I have to or whatever. And he's got the so, Hawks that week as well, so yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't think it's the worst. And as I said, Cadman might be gone by then, but. Yeah, any final thoughts on Barry, George, before we wrap this I up? I think it's great trade. It'll make heaps of money, but you know, yeah. I'm probably going to pick someone else that I think can make as much money as him because there's still too many guys. Yeah. So I'm not getting rid of Cadman and picking between him and Dempsey, really. So I guess the Billings yep. as well. I'm probably taking Billings over Barry because I think he's more reliable on the field. So that's yep. where I am with that. Fair enough. All right, I'll fire these at you guys. Um, Lazaro, uh, who watched that game? You both did. Yeah, thoughts? he had lots of mid time, but was pretty ineffective as a mid. I think there's a chance that he is relegated to sub or even drop this week, but they may persist. It's hard to know, but he wasn't particularly good. Yep. Um, Windsor, George? Subbed out? Windsor. Um, yeah. I'm pretty stiff to be subbed out. I was good. I think he likes the bigger grounds. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know. The VFR numbers is not that good. So I just passed for that price, but I would have taken him at yep. base price. Yeah, one of those keep if you have and don't get in. I don't think if you don't, there's better options. But he's a good player. Still could turn out and make some decent cash. It'd be one of those we miss, but it's less likely, I think. Um, anyone else here? Uh, Buku, Gallagher, a couple of dogs, ones that scored 49, 50, I think, each. Uh, Buku's playing like second tall defender, not intercepting. So, again, Bevo, not sure what they're doing there. He's probably better suited to that third tall role. Gallagher's playing on a wing. Actually, had some mid-time late in that game, surprisingly. Like, they subbed off um, right, Bevo, Sanders really and then Bevo put things. Harvey Gallagher in a, another first gamer in the midfield in <laughs> like fourth quarter. So, don't know, don't know, don't know. Um, Harvey Thomas, actually like that kid's game, but it's I just... Again, one of those roles. Um, I don't know how he went this week. What do you go? Forty-five. Okay, you, you just there's better out. options. Line throwing better options. Uh, and then Harley Reid. Um, bit of a frustrating one because, but there's potential there for him to average some really big numbers this year. It's just how it's is it going to come soon or is it going to be a strip feed? I Manage think minutes. Going to be a drip feed <laughs> with managed minutes and tough fixtures start the year with with them being largely uncompetitive it's going to be one of those how long do you hold on because i can see it getting better later on but like (laughs) yeah well so this is the interesting thing right um bit of a hypothetical but they've played gws this week and this is like a reasonable chance he gets smashed and drops like a 30 and you know Mm. i wonder if like people talking about trading reed next week he could also put up another 80 and just be fine even in the tougher games like rise to the occasion i could see that too um, but yeah, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll, uh, fast forward a week and see what happens there. You got him, George, don't you? Any thoughts? Sorry. Say it again. I've cut out a bit. Just Harley Reid, mate. Any, oh. uh, like just keep feeling him. He's good inside mid, but yeah, managed Tom and ground. Yep. So... All right. Uh, been a long one. Let's wrap it up and get out of here with some, just initial trade thoughts of what you're looking at in your specific team um, that might help anyone out there at this point in time, but obviously we'll be deliberating all week. I think it's, yeah, as I said before earlier on, it's just feels like a big crossroads early. Like it's been one week of actual us, you know, two weeks of footy, but one week of us getting super coach scores on the board and we've already got to make some big decisions. So where are you, where's your head at? Um, we'll start with you, JD. So I have money to go, Gibkiss to Billings in one trade, and that could be the only thing I do this week. 
or I could yep. also split um, Fisher and get like Berry and Dempsey in this week as well. So I'd use then three trades in the boost. The benefit being I get Barry's price rise. I've already got Dempsey for next week and it puts, I think, a couple of hundred K in the bank. So if I need to move off Martin, I've got options there. If I need to get rid of like a cabman, I've got options there. Um, but yeah, it does lock me into having used three trades in a boost already in this first week. But given the carnage we saw, I don't know, I kind of like having the flexibility even though I don't get to see Fisher for, a next, uh, for another week. So... I'd be, uh, well, talk to you boys maybe later about input um, on, on which way I should go. But yeah, those are the two things I'm weighing up at the moment. Yep. George, feels like you're going an entirely different way. <laughs> yeah, we are doing the Kim Jong un nuke strategy. <laughs> uh, so Fisher and Nick Martin for Billings and Sarong. And then I don't think, this is one I'm still thinking about. But I'm thinking about boosting Clark to Dempsey. To get it done early. Yep. Because I just have enough money. And then that's what I've got at the moment. I want if to Clark, save one boost. If Clark is named this week and not sub, like, do you still want to trade him? I don't really, to be honest. Because he can do better. I just think he's sub risk and he had 60 tog. So I think we're going to get quicker cash out of someone. It's just whether I boost or not. The biggest problem is I need to get McCurch in somehow. Um, so again, yeah, Martin Fisher, Clark out for Dempsey, Billings and Sarong. And then next week, I'll probably split Wines and Zachary, turn him into somebody and Massimo. Hold that money for James Jordan to another Uber mid. Yep. For me, it's either similar to JD in a sense, but I'd be still um, splitting Nick Martin, so not quite the same, but whether or not I boost. And look, Gibkus to Billings is probably locked in as the one. And then it's whether I do Fisher to Berry. We have quite a bit of money in the bank, I think, from doing that. I mean, I already do, so it's, uh, and, I, and I like having that, so it's not as big of an issue. It's whether or not I use that cash that I have, I would have this week to put it on someone like a Nick Martin's head and just do the, you know, it's similar to George in a way um, and put him up to a premium. Um, who that would be, I don't know. I don't know if I'd follow him with Sarong or, I mean, I can even just get some, one of the cheaper ones, whether that be a steal or um, if I'm confident enough in him. But I think if you were doing that, the point would be to go all the way up to an Uber. Um, so, Sarong, LDU, it's probably Sarong, especially with the North matchup. So, yeah, it's either probably one or three trades, and it's just, you know, Gibkiss to Billings, pretty pretty certain on. Already got Dempsey, already got, you know, Carroll that you don't need to get this week, but, you know, Cadman, Wilson, all those. So it's, you know, Hall and Howes, I got them. So it's, yeah, do I get Barry as well? That's the really the question, and, and it's like if I do that, I may you know if I do that and just do Gibkiss and um, and Fisher to Berry and Billings, like I'll have a lot of money, and it's whether or not I decide to use that and chuck it on. Like I think it's something like three hundred k if I do that because I've already hot for one forty or one fifty in the bank. Um, what do you do with like, that? Do you chuck it on Nick Martin's head, or do you just <laughs> that, that's the thing? Do you just yeah? It almost seems silly not to, especially maybe a best eighteen will help you get a a better score. Um, but it also feels like you could give that uh, you could give him another chance and not waste a boost type thing. So tough one. Um, I thought it'd be an easy choice considering I have you know Dempsey and stuff like that that I don't need to force in. But yeah, Barry's the big one. I'm really just, I mean, look, he scores a 50 this week. He goes up 60K. That just seems like a no-brainer, but it's like I can picture myself getting someone named Barry and watching them score 20 points and um, regretting it instantly. So, sorry, Jaws, I had to throw another one in there. I don't know. I don't know. But that's where I sit. So, plenty of days left in the week, plenty of time to make the calls. VC and C boys, and then let's get the hell out of here because it might be our longest podcast ever. And I can yeah. see JD's pup in the background. Oh, oh where are you at? 
Um, oh, shard under the. <laughs> um, yeah, I, the, one other consideration I had as well is just like Sharp obviously looks good week one. None of us have Sharp. If he has another good game this week, and I've got Barry and Dempsey now in my forward line, I actually have to do a trade to get Mead in next week. So, like, it could be getting off Cadman or Barry early. And, like, yeah, I might get 50, 60K out of them. But then, yeah, like, that probably ended up not being worth using a boost early to make all that happen. So, that, that's the other thing I'm like thinking about as well. What's like a good another must have? rookie pops up that isn't a barrier or a Dempsey and should I just like hold off and reevaluate rookies next week? Uh, all right. Vice captain, captain this week. I haven't looked at it too deeply, but uh, I've got like Dacos, Bont, Butters and Green that all seem to have pretty good matchups uh, this week. Uh, I think we saw a lot of bounce backs after poor performances last week. So I could see like going Bont into someone, but like against Gold Coast, maybe that's not particularly great. Uh I don't know. Maybe it's St. Kilda into... Like, sorry, it's um, Dacos into Green. So that Collingwood St. Kilda matchup. And then, yeah, Green's got West Coast. That seems like a no-brainer. Um, yeah, the only other one is Butters against Richmond. But I think there's overlap with the Green game. So it's probably a bit hard to commit to that. I think the way they're doing it this year is there is a, they're doing it again. Uh, just one into the other on Sunday. Bang, bang, bang. So you, you should have time. Oh, it's two um, hours, 50 minutes between them. Isn't yeah. it usually three hours total? Get used to late reviews, boys, this year. Um, I think they're doing it oh. much every week. <laughs> oh, yeah. That means like 9.50 it finishes. Lockout won't lift until like 11. That's brutal. I don't want to be Pretty... doing midnight videos on Sundays. <laughs> that sucks. I think um, I, I might not even make it to round four making content if, if that's what it's going to be. Yeah. I think round three is Easter, so at least that's all right. Um, it's a Monday, Monday, Arvo. Uh, George, if you, I think with you, probably Dacos into Green, but if you're getting so wrong, like you say you are, are you sticking the VC on him? I think he's early in the round. Can I just say I will be there Sunday night no matter what? <laughs> and my VC will be. Uh, I don't have the fixtures in front of me, but I do remember Dacos plays early. So I'll just yeah, VC Dacos so... and probably yeah. see Bond. Yeah, okay. Not so wrong against North on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Tom Green just scored 150 on them. Uh... No, nah, probably Green. Still... Yeah, I think on Dacos, we'll just go with that again. Lock it away early, and then yeah, Tom Green seems pretty hard to pass up if Nick fails. Even though you have to wait eight games to see uh, how your captain goes. All right, sure, you boys have had enough. Maybe everyone watching by now has uh, had enough of a long podcast. But there's plenty to go about, and to be honest, next week probably just as much, if not more, because there's more teams um, on the bubble. Hitting the price yeah. cycles and on the bubble, so I'm sure we'll be back to discuss how we went um, stream this week, I guess any one up for it. It might be a big one actually with some teams that we are keen on. Uh, I'm make some flying videos for work this lists. week. So I'm not back until um, well after teams this week. I'll let George make his video and um, collect some extra lunch money and I might do a stream. I don't know. I'll see. Um, I think I'll yeah, get home and on late Thursday. Okay. I, I feel Maybe like we Friday. shouldn't be like just sharing schedules at the end of the podcast. Can we sign <laughs> off and we'll discuss? <laughs> Someone will rock up to rock, rock up to your door or follow you. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah, we'll sign off. It's been an hour and forty three minutes. <laughs> We're certainly getting to go to bed. Um, good luck this week. Good luck with your trades decisions, and we'll um, yeah, we'll catch you next time.